Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about my August and September TBR or my to be read list. These are all the books that I want to read over the next two months. This is going to be definitely a very like realistic TBR list. I don't read a ton of books in a month, but realistically, I would say lately, I've been averaging about three books a month. So if you guys wanna keep up with my reading process, you can definitely add me on Goodreads. I always update my lists and what I'm currently reading on there. I feel like I have heard so many good things about all of these books. So if you guys wanna see what is on my August and September TBR list, make sure to keep on watching. The first physical book that I really want to read before the summer is over, so this will probably be my first book that I pick up after I'm done. I'm currently reading The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I'm almost done with that. It's been a really cute read so far. I don't have like all my final thoughts yet, but I will update you guys eventually. But after that, I think I'm going to pick up My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. This is classified as a all new spicy murder mystery, which I am so excited about. I absolutely loved It Happened One Summer and then also Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. Before I continue, I just want your guys' opinion on if you like when I read the backs of the book covers or not. I know some booktubers and book talkers just give like a brief synopsis instead of reading the whole back, but let me know your preference. I'm still getting into the swing of things with book content. So this one says, it was supposed to be a relaxing vacation in sweet sunny Cape Cod, just me and my beloved brother, but discovering a corpse in our rental house really throws a wrench into our tanning schedule. Now, a rude, crude bounty hunter has arrived on the back of his motorcycle to catch the killer and refuses to believe I could be helpful, despite countless hours of true crime podcast listening, not to mention a fulfilling teaching career of wrangling second grade. A brash bounty hunter and an energetic elementary school teacher, the murder-solving team no one asked for. But thanks to these pesky attempts on my life, we're stuck together, come hell or high tide. This sounds like it's going to be so good. It seems like a rom-com, a murder mystery. It also sounds like a little bit like grumpy sunshine dynamic here. So I really, really love that. I love like the grumpy sunshine. I think it's so funny. I just read Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Immaculate. That book was immaculate. I definitely feel like I'm going to enjoy this book. So hoping to get through this one next in August. Another book on my TBR is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I feel like this is so popular all over book talk and bookstagram. Basically every social media platform now has a book section in it. Book face, wait, how would you say Facebook? Book book? <laughs> Anyway, so from what I've read about this, I believe this is a workplace enemies to lover trope, which I absolutely love. I love a good enemies to lovers. So this says, Lucy Hutton and Joshua Templeman hate each other, not dislike, not begrudgingly tolerate hate, and they have no problems displaying their feelings through a series of ritualistic passive aggressive maneuvers as they sit across from each other, executive assistants to co-CEOs of a publishing company. Now that they're up for the same promotion, their battle of wills has come to a head and Lucy refuses to back down when their latest game could cost her her dream job. But the tension between Lucy and Joshua has also reached its boiling point and Lucy is discovering that maybe she doesn't hate Joshua and maybe he doesn't hate her either, or maybe this is just another game. Definitely looking forward to reading this one. Again, really, really cute cover art as well. And this one is about 380 pages. And just looking back, My Killer Vacation looks a little bit shorter at just under 300 pages. It's 290. I've never read anything by Sally Thorne before, so maybe it'll open up like a new world of books for me. Another book on my TBR, this one I've had for months and months and I've just never gotten around to reading it, but I have heard fantastic things about Emily Henry and I've never read a book by her. So the one that I have here on my list is Book Lovers. I believe this is her latest release that just came out this year. I know a lot of people loved People We Meet on Vacation as well as Beach Read, which I've never read those either. I am really looking forward to experiencing something that Emily Henry wrote because I've heard once you start with her books, you can't stop. So this one is again, another rom-com. We are not surprised here. So this says, one summer, two rivals, and a plot twist they didn't see coming. Nora Stevens' life is books. She reads them all and she is not that type of heroine. Not the plucky one, not the laid back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people
people Nora is heroin for are her clients, to whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister, Libby, which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away. With visions of a small town transformation for Nora, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish, brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences, what they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. I feel like for some reason I keep pushing this one to like the back of my list. I don't know why. I feel like it's because I've heard mixed things about it. Like some people really love Emily Henry. Some people are just like, nope, absolutely not. So I feel like that's kind of why I've been pushing this one to the back of my list like month over month. I've had this for at least like three months now. I'm going to make it my goal to read this by the end of September so we could finally see how I feel about Emily Henry. It obviously would not be a TBR list if I didn't have something for my girl Colleen Hoover on there. Colleen is absolutely blowing up and taking over the internet right now and for good reasons. On my list to read in the next two months is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. I just want to talk about how I got my nails done the other day and I basically got the All Your Perfects cover on my nails without even realizing. I showed her a photo from Pinterest that was like this light purple color with daisies, yellow and white daisies. And then when I got home, I was like, I, All Your Perfects, my nails and it's so cute. I have mixed thoughts about reading this book and here's why. I feel like I started off so strong with Colleen Hoover, like it ends with Us, Ugly Love, November 9th, Verity, all absolutely destroyed me in the best way possible. I then moved on to Reminders of Him and Confess. Those two books didn't like 100% I didn't love them as much. Reminders of Him, I gave like a four out of five stars. Confess was more of a three out of five stars for me. They definitely weren't my favorite Colleen Hoover books. So I'm definitely hoping that this one delivers and maybe it's a sign because my nails match the cover. So this one says, so I'm assuming that this one takes place in two time periods, past and present, because the past is broken up by then and now. So this says then. The last thing Quinn expected was to meet the love of her life just outside her fiance's front door. A year after leaving behind their cheating partners, Quinn and Graham are in a perfect relationship that seemed designed by fate. Now, seven years later, their perfect love is threatened by their imperfect marriage. The memories, mistakes, and dreams that they have built up over the years are tearing them apart. The one thing that could save them might also be the very thing that pushes their marriage past the point of no return. So interesting, actually. I don't know if I've ever read a Colleen Hoover where the characters were already married. It was more kind of like them meeting for the first time and going throughout their relationship. I'm definitely hoping for some coho redemption when I read this book here because I just miss that like, you guys know when you read Verity in November 9th for the first time, like I've never experienced a feeling like that again with a book honestly and I'm just like, I need Colleen to deliver for me again. So the last of the physical books in my TBR here before I jump on into my Kindle is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I feel like I've seen everyone talking about this. I recently read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, which I really loved, but I'm excited for this. I really loved Christina Lauren's style of writing in The Unhoneymooners, so definitely looking forward to reading this one as well. I think what kind of pushed me over the edge to purchase this was I recently read Every Summer After. Once I rated that and was reading the reviews on Goodreads, a lot of people were saying that that book is like the ugly little sister of Love in Other Words. Like, it's trying to be love in other words, but it wasn't love in other words. You know what I mean? So I'm curious to kind of read them both within like a short time frame. This says, Macy Sorensen is settling into an ambition if emotionally tepid routine. Work hard as a new pediatrics resident, plan her wedding to an older financially secure man, keep her head down and her heart tucked away. But when she runs into Elliot Petropolis, the first and only love of her life, the careful bubble she's constructed begins to dissolve. Once upon a time, 
Elliot was Macy's entire world, growing from her gangly, bookish friend into the man who coaxed her heart open again, only to break it on the very night he declared his love for her. Told in alternating timelines between then and now, teenage Elliot and Macy grow from friends to much more. As adults, they have become strangers to one another until their chance reunion. Although their memories are obscured by the agony of what happened that night so many years ago, Elliot will come to understand the truth behind Macy's decade-long silence and will have to overcome the past and himself to revive her faith in the possibility of an all-consuming love. Whoa. After just reading the back cover, this does sound a lot like Every Summer After, so this just piqued my curiosity so much more to dive into this and see the differences in comparison to Every Summer After, but of course I will keep you guys posted. I absolutely love the cover on here. So those are the five physical books on my TBR list for August and September. Now, like I said, I want to jump into a Kindle book. So one night I spent like hours scrolling the hashtag Kindle Unlimited on TikTok just to see what was recommended. Repeatedly in those videos over and over again for Kindle Unlimited recommendation was the Mind F series, if you guys are catching my drift. Keeping it family friendly here, but the first book in the series is The Risk, and this is by St. Abby. I am very excited to read this book. I just heard so many incredible things about this series. I think there are five books all on the shorter side, like between 90 and like 130 pages. So probably quick easy reads, but I just heard this series is incredible. So here is the first book again. It's called The Risk by St. Abby. From what I gather about this series, I believe it's about a female criminal and she falls in love with the detective working her case. I think that that's what this is about, but this says, I didn't expect him. I didn't want to fall in love, but I can't let him go. Logan Bennett makes the world a safer place. He's brilliant. He's a hero. He locks away the sick and depraved. And while he's saving lives, I'm taking them. One name at a time. I've trained for too long. I've been patient. I can't stop now. Revenge is best served cold. Okay. This sounds weird already, but Good. <laughs> Messed up moral compass. Read at your own risks. Really looking forward to reading these. As I said, I heard so many amazing things. Like this is everyone's top Kindle Unlimited recommendation. And I am definitely into true crime too. So I feel like I'm going to really, really love this. I've heard it is pretty spicy as well. And I also will just say quick update. I really love reading on my Kindle. For like the first six months of reading, I was all about the physical book and I wasn't sure how I would feel about the Kindle. But I recently read a book on my Kindle and I loved it and I kind of miss reading on my Kindle. So I might jump back to reading this series on my Kindle and then read My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. I guess we'll see how things go. All right, you guys, so those are all the books on my current TBR list. Those are all the books that I want to read in the coming months. Overall, I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this video. If you did and if you enjoyed spending time with me today, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know and it really helps me out. As I said, if you want to follow along on my reading journey, definitely make sure to add me as a friend on Goodreads and please leave me your book recommendations in the comments down below. I feel like you guys kind of know my style and the genre that I like by now, so please leave me your book recommendations down below. I am always looking to buy new books. Also make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel before you leave. I would love to have you guys here as part of my little YouTube fam. If you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos, click that notification bell down below and you'll get notified every single time that I upload a new video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and of course, I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.